Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Gran Turismo 4. Um, B-Spec Bob did a good job with the R246 Tokyo Endurance event. I think it was 300 kilometers or something. I did the first stint in that amazing Wood One Toyota, which somehow is much quicker than the uh, other Toyota Supras. Untuned, just in stock form. Uh, and then B Spec Bob did a good job of um, riding it out. So he, his skill does seem to improve because earlier he was really getting um, overtaking left and right. He was much slower than the other AI cars. But, anyways, this is also. I wouldn't have mind if I had to drive this one fully myself because this really is pretty damn epic. The track, the cars, the Supras, the JGTC cars. This is quintessential Gran Turismo for me. This amazing. And also having seen yesterday a YouTube video of Rolf Waffle with a real life 90s JGTC footage. All these cars are real, all the liveries, etc. Makes it that much more cooler. The NSXs, the Supras. I don't think there were skylines in this matchup, but still. Also, the fact that the rear bumper is missing. Man, for a PS2 game, it still looks better than most games today, if you ask me. Anyways, um, the missing rear bumper, that is also exactly how the real JGTC cars were. I saw in that footage of yesterday. Anyways, really happy with this one. Also that I didn't need to use some kind of a way overpowered car to uh, be able to keep P-Spec Bob competitive. It was really just like uh, a totally uh, suitable car for the event. They were all uh, the similar types of cars and we just won without too much problem. So let's start the next endurance event. And we'll do the same, we'll do the first stint myself and then Le uh, hand it over to B Spec Bob. Right, Mitsubishi FTO Super Touring Car. Really don't like the styling of this car. We'll keep it in the garage just for fun. Or although if I need money, I don't think I have a lot of problem selling this car. This car doesn't really do it for me. But still, always nice to get. A reward car. So this is Tokyo R246, 300 kilometers indeed. All right, um, let's do the super speedway 150 miles. Quickly see, this is probably Motegi. Yes, the super speedway 150 miles race, which takes place on the twin ring Motegi super speedway. Experience the technical aspects of slipstreaming in this challenge. No slipstreaming needed if you have a faster car, I would say. Really nice, the, uh, the icon to the left, 150 mile super speedway. Every endurance event has their own, has its own icon. Which I, I must say they look really uh, nice. All right, so. Apparently that Sauber Mercedes is super quick. But this could be quite a tricky, uh, a tricky race. All right, so this is basically the, um, the fastest cars in the game. And I'm actually not that good in this speedway, especially that, that tighter corner of the two. I always go a bit wide there. Nope. Um, anywho, let's also quickly see the icon of this one. I forgot to check the icon. So it's to the left. R246 with some 
Japanese symbols above it, it's 300 kilometers. Uh, let's get a suitable car. We do have that Toyota Minolta. And I think that one is also supposed to be quite quick. Although probably not as quick as the Sauber C9, the Mercedes. All right, we now have 3,800 skill points. I think previously we had 30, yeah, only 37. So we only got 100 extra points for that race. It's a bit uh, of a bummer. I'm not sure, let's look that up. What races the skill level of the B-Spec driver? Do they need to drive a full race or only part of the race? GT4 B spec skill level uh, based on the player vehicle's performance compared to the opponents machine skill, core skill and battle skill Win races by a small margin, preferably by about 100 meter or less, but anything under one second is probably good. All right, you can go all the way up to, I think, 10,000 points. take anyone before the first 10 seconds of a race or more if it's a big track um, you should always keep a good fight not simply overtake and run free try to stay some time behind them before overtake win races by a small margin Winning is good, but if you lose by the same parameters mentioned in the fourth note, it's also not that bad. The difficulty setup of the races doesn't matter, so adjust it accordingly to the car and track to be able to do the races with the parameters I mentioned. class or something I have no idea uh, but yeah we're not that high but he was quite competitive in the previous race so I was happy with that um, let's find out oh, wrong button let's find a suitable car right we have an XJR9 the R89 the Minolta. We already did a Le Mans race in this one, I think. So for now, let's just take the Minolta. Pretty looks pretty epic. A 
kerja di yeah, what do we want do we want hard or super hard what was this 150 miles or something i don't know we will just have to see That it's not like we have a much quicker car than the rest. I mean, that Sauber Mercedes, I think it's just quicker, the quickest car. At least I think I read that somewhere. Um, I am going to disable the assists. I'm not also not sure whether that is actually beneficial when you do B spec book. How he reacts to no assists, but in these older cars, I don't need active stability management or traction control. Although I'm not sure whether these older Le Mans type cars, this is an 88C, not sure what the year is. Mid 90s, 89. Uh, maybe the traction control or some variation of it already existed at the time, but I disable it in the game just to have uh, to have a bit more authentic experience or at least a bit more um, lively experience but you also have to battle the traction a little bit instead of relying on computers to do it here we go let's do the first stint ah we only have an eight point race Shit, that modern Le Mans racer he may look he looks actually quicker right here we go now we're kidding around
goddammit, I'm making way too many mistakes. And I don't think B-Spec will, will be able to keep up. This fucking shit. All right, I have to. Uh, I will start over. I'm not even going to try and see. I can probably make it up, but yeah, it is also a race that I'm almost thinking I have to just have to drive it myself because B Spec Bob will never be able to keep up with that Toyota at at the front. Uh, anyways, because of the speeds. I have violent vibrations in my wheel, so I'm moving it from four newton meter to three. Fuck me. So it is 30 seconds per, um, lap 
and it's 100 laps. So that's 3000 seconds. 300 seconds is five minutes. So 3000 seconds in my mind would be um, Fifty minutes race. I could do that myself. Probably it's safer because if I hand it over to B-Spec Bob, really good chance that uh, he will screw it up, and then I could quickly get back into the car, uh, just changing drivers without if I notice that he goes too slowly. But then the problem is a pit stop here, standing still here you lose so much more time than in a regular circuit because we go like mostly full time 300 plus so each second that you are standing still um, yeah you will really uh, get be far behind very quickly so and also it's not like i can very easily catch up it is uh, with that other toyota it's maybe half a second to a second per lap but then you need to be fully consistent so let's say that you lose like 20 30 seconds because of a pit stop um and maybe even more you need also maybe double that in the amount of laps to catch up again so of course, if it's just a petrol pit stop, then it's no problem because everybody has to do that. But if I have to make an extra pit stop just to get B-Spec Bob again out of the cockpit, uh, that would be a bit of a bummer. So I'm not sure what to do. Maybe I will just have to drive it myself. 15 minutes of driving. It's now six o'clock at evening.
really have to watch out for the AI bumping me off track. Yeah, this is what I mean. They have no problems bumping you off track.
Holy shit! I'm not gonna hand it over to Beastback Bob because I think he can screw up. So we have two more of these tins to do. We can stay out for that long.
holy shit that's pretty exciting when you have to pass those cars because they only need to make one stupid mistake and you spin out and you lost the race <laughs> so there's really something at stake it looks quite simple and it is quite simple but god damn it if it goes wrong it can go wrong quickly we're at last stint
fine on that. I was not expecting that. I, I really was thinking that I had to still had to do a couple. Alright, nice. God damn it, that was uh, an hour long oval driving for 50 minutes. Let's watch one lap of replay. Pretty epic camera shot. Eagles born to fly, rivers made the ramble. A dangerous mind, I'm a prime example. Sense of speed is pretty incredible. It's also the wind noise when you're in first person view. Pretty damn epic. The camera shots, the sense of speed, the car set the line. I, I don't really like the circuit because it um, smaller corner. It's it's constantly a bit fighting against understeer, not going wide. And while I do, I'm really looking forward to GT5 NASCAR races. I do appreciate the nuances of oval racing. There's much more to it than than meets the eye. Uh, initially I thought like okay they just did an oval so that the spectators have like a full-time view of uh, what's happening on track compared to regular tracks where you just have a grandstand and you see cars flying by and then you don't see them for a minute and then they come flying by again and that times 60 or uh, times half an hour or an hour and a half uh, so that's also not fun that's oval racing for a spectator it's much more fun because you constantly uh, to a certain extent have uh, a visual on, on the race cars what's happening on track but yeah you could also argue like it's super simplistic compared to uh, real life tracks as Le Mans or Nürburgring or what have you um, but I don't think that is fair I do think there's there's a lot uh, of nuance indeed in over racing slip streaming pit stop strategies uh, going balls uh, all out, balls to the walls, um, or actually car almost against the wall to um, uh, yeah, 
get the, the, the most optimal racing line, but with the risk of hitting the wall, etc. So there's a lot to it. Um, and what now was my point? Ah, yeah, that this Motegi Speedway, I don't like it that much because of that tighter corner, but that is not to say that I don't like oval uh, races in general, but yeah, happy this is uh, over. And yeah, I didn't dare to give the steering wheel to um, Beastback Bob because that other Min Minota Toyota, it, it was really, you only need to make one mistake and he would uh, have catched up and uh, probably won the race. So I had to do it myself. Maybe we get a cool car. That would be nice. All right, here we go. No more kidding around. All right, so that is that same NSXR prototype. We have the road car and the race car, and this is like a fictional car. But just like in real life, often these race cars need to be homologated by also producing um, a set number or a minimum number of road going versions of that respective race car and often the race car is also based upon a road car so to say that's it's more the other way around that the race car is just based on the road car but what i uh, got from um R rolf waffles uh, gt4 or no G grand turismo video uh focusing on the actual real life g jgtc championship uh, in Japan in the 90s and the 2000s, a video I watched yesterday, I can highly recommend it, super cool video. But what he said is that actually, well, the common way of JGTC and also DTM and British Touring Car Racing probably, they, they are all road cars converted to a race car. But until in JGTC, um, Porsche actually created the uh, Porsche 911 GT1 which was a totally custom built race car and then they turned it the other way around then they created a couple of road cars based on that race car to homologate the race car to, to be able to participate so it was they had much more freedom in designing that car they were not restricted to starting with a road car basis uh, to derive the race car variant from no they just designed a race car and then they made a few tweaks to make it road legal and uh, apparently um, there was one manufacturer not sure whether it was Lamborghini but they were totally or maybe Ferrari they were totally not happy with that the FIA uh, allowed the GT1 um, yeah a little bit of fake hom uh, homologation or yeah, it's not really a road car derived sports car. It was a race car with some copycat road cars just for homologation purposes. Um, I think Ferrari was totally not happy with that and they, or, or one other of the big brands and they actually withdrew from uh, the season. Um, or from the, um, the racing uh, class altogether, the JGTC. Anyways, uh, that's a little sidestep. Uh, still a pretty cool car. I will normally I'm not into Vision GT cars or concept cars, but this one is so close to the real thing. I just read on fandom in the previous episodes, or was that this episode? No, I think it was the previous one, or maybe it was the start of this one, where we got this um, road going car in black as a reward for the. I think it was the Montegi eight hours. I'm not. No, it was not the Martegi 8 hours. It was the Tokyo 246, 300 kilometers. Um, I was reading up about that road car and there they said like, uh, also the race car, it really is uh, quite close to the actual JGTC car. The only difference is a little uh, different front bumper or something, but uh, yeah, so it's a fictional race car, this one. Uh, or it's not actually, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like the JGTC NSX is a real thing, but the LM race car is not a real thing, but it's basically more or less the same as the JGTC actual race car. So it is a fictional car, but really grounded in reality. So, I, and it looks really cool, especially the road car in black. So I will uh, for sure keep them in the garage. NSX, 
Although I do like the, uh, the one with the uh, pop-up headlights, the NA1 series of the first generation. I like them better, but still it's an amazing cool car. Also with that air intake uh, on the roof, pretty damn epic. So I'm happy with this one. Although I don't really like the headlight units, but you cannot have it all. Uh, one other endurance race done. Let's save the game before it crashes. I only had one crash of the emulator in the whole playthrough so far. But with these... Endurance races, I really want to avoid crashing and losing progress. All right, what are we going to do? 24 hour, I will let it run overnight. This one I could, in theory, do within an hour. Uh, if you speed up the... Um, the B-Spec mode. This is 24 hour, 24 hour, 1000 kilometers. Yeah sure how long those are. This one is also not that long, but this is IA, so I think this one was, it's not indicated here, but here it's 2 hours 45 minutes. Ah, so that one is not that long at all. If you times it, uh, do it times 3 in B-Spec mode. Anyways, let's first do the IB ones, uh, so these two. Which one shall we do first? And they're probably both around four hours. I don't know, maybe this one a bit longer. Yeah, this one is probably longer than four hours. Um, so we have Nürburgring. 24, then we have Sartre 1 and 2. I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe one has chicanes and the other doesn't. I don't think 1 and 2 is the driving direction for uh, Le Mans. It's actually whether there are chicanes or not. Alright, let's do this one. Standard or sports tires. Alright, what car do we have that is super powerful with standard or sports tires? Yeah, the Speed 12. I actually didn't drive that car yet, so... I did use it in the New, New York... Um, endurance race I used it but that was for B-Spec Bob but I wanted to drive it myself as well because it sounded quite epic actually so let's just use this one Ah, by the way, I think I'm already way over the 45 minute marker. We'll have to end the episode here. We will continue in the next one. Guys, hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you there. For the meantime, don't forget always to keep on gaming. Later.